So most of you guys have already seen other whiskey tubers do the you only need five whiskeys from the famous Reddit post back in 2020. But you guys haven't seen my list because I've never done one. So not only am I going to give you the updated 2024 version of the list, but I'm going to give it to you with a twist. So stay tuned to find out what that is. Okay. Oh yeah. Welcome to Whiskey Me. My name is David. Of course, I'm going to give you five bottles from this list of categories. But I'm also going to give you one additional bottle with a twist or out of the box bottles. Picks that's either allocated or it could be expensive, unique from craft, something just more refreshing. Because let's be honest, doing the same old thing can get a little stale. So I'm going to give you a twist. I only have one rule for this, which is no store picks. Just too much variance, too hard to get, and it's really hard to replicate that same bond. So no store picks. Let's get right to the list. The first category, chip mixers. My standard picks, Old Forester 100s, the bourbon or the rye. It's cheap at around $20 to $25, and it's a great mixer. First, the 100 proof. You know, a lot of the other cheap mixers might be you know, 90 or 94 proof, and sometimes when they get diluted with the juice, the ice, sugars, it just gets a little too watered down. But because the 100 proof, the flavor does stand out and it still kind of outlasts or stays strong through that mixing. So you still get that bourbon or the rye feel. And the out of box pick, the Redwood Empire Lost Monarch coming in around 30 or $35. Now it is a little bit more expensive than the Old Forster 100, but it's already a blend of bourbons and rye. It's already 55% rye and 45% bourbon. So you get the best of both worlds in one bottle. You don't need two bottles. So you save shell space, you save a little bit of money. And I had this in Old Fashioned. Awesome. I had this in a Manhattan. Awesome. I had this in a Whiskey Sour. Mwah. Just a great cheap mixer. You don't want multiple bottles. So just have one to use it in a bourbon or a rye kind of cocktail. All right, second category, the go-to drink or the bottle. In my opinion, this can't be too cheap and something I really enjoy. So it might not be something, I don't want to call it a daily drinker because, you, you know, technically you shouldn't drink every day, but no one's looking. It's okay. Just drink. <laughs> not unless you can control it. But it's, to me, it should be, it should stand up and it should stand out a little bit amongst your bar, but also something that doesn't break the bank. So my standard pick, the Knob Creek 12 year old coming around $65. I understand that this could be allocated in some areas of the country, but in California, it's pretty readily available. Yes, you do have to do some hunting, but if you visit a couple of stores, you should be able to find an Opry 12. And it's at 100 proof, and at 12 years old, at $65, it's just one of my absolute favorite go-to bourbons. How do I say this? It, it has the perfect balance of oak and sweet. So it does have the sweet, does have a little peanutness, but it does have that oak and that char and that bitterness that I need in order to balance it out. It gives you just enough of the spice to just make sure you know it's there so it doesn't get boring. My out of the box pick is going to be Weller Antique 107. I know, I know it's super allocated, it's super hard to find and it's very expensive at most places, but that's why I call it out of box pick. Let's just pretend it was, you know, year 2005 and it was readily available on the shelf. <laughs> I wish it was, but not right now. But I mean, MSRP is around $50. It's one of those bourbons that just an awesome go-to drink. It's a weeder, so it doesn't have much of that rice spice, so you can kick off the night very well. It's 107, so you can have a little fun. It has a lot of flavor, but doesn't burn you or end the night pretty fast either. So I think it's a perfect go-to bourbon. And to me, I think it's the best out of the weather lineup. But again, that's controversial. And I haven't really had a bottle of the single barrel this year at PP, so maybe I'm wrong. But so third category, Friday Night Pour. To me, this should have a little bit more proof. It should be a little bit more intense of a flavor. Just something that will start the weekend with a bang. So my standard bottle pick will be Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, any batch coming in at $100. The proof will vary depending on the batch. Now, of course, if you get the C923, you have one, that's a great one, but any batch is great. B523 is great, 
A123 was great. I haven't had the chance to try the A124 yet, but I'm pretty sure it'll be great. Yes, maybe not, you know, relative to other batches, but I'm pretty sure if you just drink it in a vacuum, not comparing it to anything else, like any other batches, pretty sure at that price, it'll still be great. It has the proof and the intense flavor of the sweet chocolate, peanuts, caramel, nougat, and the spice and the oak. It just gives you everything and gives you the proof so you can just start the weekend with a bang. Maybe a little too much of a bang, but it'll sure be a bang. So I absolutely love starting off my weekend on a Friday night with a larger Craig Barrel Proof Pour. So for my out-of-box pick, E.H. Taylor Single Barrel, coming in at MSRP of $70. Again, I know, I know, allocated, can't find it, etc., etc. Same here, I'm just saying, this is why it's called out-of-box pick. It's a wonderful pour. It's a bottle and bond coming at 100 proof and a single barrel. I mean, I heard some people say they had some bad E.H. Taylor single barrels. I haven't had any, I had a, a lot of samples. I've had, I think three bottles in the last two years and all of them have been absolutely fantastic. I described E.H. Taylor single barrels as literally cherry Coca-Cola aged in oak barrels. That's 50% ABV, right? <laughs> it just, it's so sweet, but it has that cola spice, but it has that cherry sweetness. It just rounds it all out with that oak and just, mmm, just starts off the weekend so well. It's, it, when, when something tastes so great, you get a little bit of sweetness and you get the alcohol and the sugar high at the same time. Oh yeah, that's how you start a weekend. And that's how you start a weekend with the EA's Taylor Single Barrel. If you're enjoying this content, please push that like button because it really helps me out. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please do so because it really gives me a lot of motivation to create more entertaining and fun videos. All right, the next category, impress your guests. For me, presentation really matters in this one. The visual, the brand really is almost half the grade as, along with the great flavor. So my standard bottle pick, Little Book Chapter 7, coming at $130. As you guys can see, the presentation is fantastic. The box, the bottle, the wax, the tag, just in the name. I mean, they might not know Little Book, but just say, hey, it's, it's the brother of Bookers, and they'll most likely know. And the flavor, the Little Book Chapter 7, finished number four in my top five whiskeys of 2023. So it also just tastes wonderful. So presentation plus the flavor, just equals the best impress your guest bottle. My out of the box pick is Wild Turkey 101, 12 years old, coming in at MSRP of $70 in, in Japan. I understand we're not in Japan. I understand this is an international only pick. Again, that's why it's an out of box pick. But if you can, this would be a great impress your guest bottle because it's not available here. It is very expensive here. And it comes in this beautiful box. Unfortunately, I don't have that box with me right now, but I did, you pull it out of that box, you pull this bottle out, ooh, that's already impressing the guest. Second, the unique flavor in terms of just so much fruits, the tropical fruits, the medley of fruits, that is some, it's probably a whiskey they haven't had any like it before. And third, the wild turkey name. Wild turkey 1-1 is very famous and this bottle and this label is very unique. So it's a perfect bottle to impress your guest that's a little out of the box. And the last category, special occasion. Warning, these are gonna be expensive bottles. But to me, a special occasion calls for these kind of bottles. You know, let's say it's a birthday, a wedding anniversary, especially those like 10th, the 20th, or the 25th. You can celebrate that at in and out which is a great burger at a great price. But because you go there so, you know, often, or I don't wanna say daily, but you know, every week, it, it just becomes another night out. You go to a nice fancy restaurant that has taste and service that matches the price for a special occasion. And I think a bottle of whiskey for a special occasion should also kind of be that type of bottle, something that you don't get every day, something that you can't get every day, something that is a little bit more expensive. So it is, it stands out. So my standard pick for this category, Old Carter coming in at 200 to $250. The proof varies depending on what type and which batch you get. 
but they're all cash trained and they're just blended perfectly by Mark and Sherry Carter. It's a special pour for a special night, a special occasion. It's expensive. Again, $250 is not cheap, but that's why it calls it for on a special night. It's, how do I say, the price matches the flavor, the flavor matches the occasion. Something like a Wagyu steak that just don't have for dinner every night, but something that you want on your birthday. And to me, on my birthday, old Carter would be awesome. If somebody got me an old Carter for my birthday, oh man, they'd be my best friends for life. So to me, this was the best whiskey of 2023. And that's why it deserves the status it has. And I absolutely love it. So my out of box pick, I was thinking about going with a VTech or, you know, Pappy, but that seems a little too easy. So my out of box pick is Four Roses, limited edition, hopefully the 2023 release, the 135th anniversary. I, the, the cool part is again, 135th. I think if I had a Booker's 25th or the Booker's Rye, maybe that would be a, a bottle. But the fact that this is an anniversary bottle of 135th and you're celebrating, you know, either a birthday, an anniversary, a wedding, I think kind of signifies that type of mystique. Now, I haven't opened this bottle yet because I'm saving for my special occasion, but I've had a couple of pours luckily, and it is just, it's a thing of beauty. I really, really want to open this. I really, really want to drink it, but again, I'm saving it for my special occasion. So if that's the case, to me, you should hopefully be able to find it for your special occasion. Is it going to be expensive? Yes, even MSRP is $200, $220, depending on where you get it. And most people can't find it for less than four or $500. So I understand that. But just like you would have a great wedding at a nice resort, something, some place that you wouldn't stay normally because of the price that's what i mean by the, the four roses limited edition same concept yes would you do this for maybe your seventh wedding anniversary maybe not but you sure your 10th for your 20th maybe sometimes you have a vacation in hawaii for those anniversaries maybe you have it closer home but buy a bottle of four roses limited edition 135th so again i understand it's not for everybody. I understand that some people don't want to spend that much for a bottle of whiskey, but I'm on the opposite side. I don't think you should spend that much money for a room of a hotel that you're just going to sleep in. But there's a lot of people who sway in sweet rooms, you know, that spend thousands of dollars on their hotel room. So it all depends on your, I guess, uh, how you value something, right? And so if you want a special pour or a special occasion that's a little out of the box, Four Roses, limited edition, 135th. So let me know in the comments, what's your five whiskeys that you choose? Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.